Greg, thank you so much for joining me and congratulations on another successful Finnovate. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure to be here. Always have time for Medici. You guys do great work. <laughs> well, we appreciate it, but I would love to hear how the event went this year, what themes have come out of the event, and what has you most excited? Yeah, so there's a lot of really interesting takeaways from this show, um, a lot of new initiatives for us, but one of the things that we really tried to do with Finnovate Fall in particular was make a concerted effort to go out and get more early stage companies, more startup companies, and really make sure that we had people up on stage who were fighting for the life of their company. We love the energy that they bring, the intensity that they bring, and I think we saw a really sustained high energy level throughout the conference so far, which has been terrific for us. Um, it's been our biggest event ever. Uh, we had 75 companies up on stage, and it's gone very smoothly. We're quite pleased. That's excellent. And after talking to a lot of the folks here, there really seems to be this resurgence in personal finance, which I found very interesting. So I'd yeah. love to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, absolutely. So personal finance is an interesting category because in around 2012, 2013, we saw a massive number of companies who were working on it. 2014, 2015, we started to hear people saying, personal finance is dead, it's played out. But what really was happening was you had a lot of companies who were setting the bar at a certain level and the, the industry was sort of meeting that bar, the sort of idea that monthly budgeting was going to help, the idea that you need to keep track of your finance. And don't get me wrong, those are very important pieces, but it's clearly incomplete. There's a lot of major components of personal finance that are difficult to account for in that type of system and now we're seeing people who are tackling deeper levels of problems. Things like what happens if I have a child? What, what I need to do if I'm going to buy a house? Even getting to the question, what type of college can I afford? How much loans should I take out? These are major financial decisions, and the vast majority of people who have to make them don't have any support at all as they make those decisions, let alone when you get to something catastrophic like the death of your parent or something like that. All of a sudden, you're thrust into this moment where you need to act like a grown up. You need to take charge of a situation and now there are people who are putting tools together to make that process easier, which is really great to see. So is this personal finance 2.0? I don't think so. I think it's really just a continuation, a natural next step. But there's a really interesting parallel for the rest of the fintech industry. When you see a category that you think this is closed, this is a dead category, we've taken innovation as far as we can, no. Look one step farther. Look for those big pieces that you're missing. The opportunity for creativity is always there, and there are customers whose needs are not being met by what's out there. So whenever you see, whenever I hear somebody say, I'm not interested in innovation in that category, I think you need to just think more creat creatively. It's, there, there's opportunity there. Somebody needs to go out there and grab it. And you recently wrote a very compelling supplement around how FinTech is growing up in certain areas. And like you said, making sure that adults are acting like adults. So yeah. what else are you seeing within that space that maybe has you nervous, again, a little excited, and maybe even hopeful? So on the nervous side, I mean, you look at the amount of personal data that is being thrown around, the protection of data, and you look at the security concerns that a lot of the Finnovate innovators are working on, there's really terrifying stuff out there. And the obligation that people have when they take some personal data from people is really high. The threat of data breaches and hacks is really high. So no surprise that you see a lot of companies innovating in that space. Those demos are always terrifying for me to watch because you don't think about them on a day-to-day -day basis unless you're in this space. But the threats are real. So sometimes you see these demos and you think, oh my God, that's terrifying. Somebody can take my information, can pinpoint exactly where I am, can predict my behavior, can, to some extent can predict my own behavior better than I can based on algorithms that I can't foresee and can't understand. So there is that scary element to it. But on the other side, what this opens up is this opportunity for genuine personal finance and the opportunity for companies to really say, this, these are the needs that aren't being met right now. These are opportunities that exist in the space. And we see a lot of companies who are taking this data and doing amazing things with it. And you, we heard a couple of presenters say, you can't get anywhere without clean data. Artificial intelligence doesn't work without clean data. It's a very difficult balance to strike. I don't think we've got it exactly right, but I think we're starting to move in the right direction and people recognize the challenges, which is a really good thing. So I expect to see a lot of innovations in that space in the next couple of years. It's probably something that will never really close. Um, as, you know, as you know, innovators continue to push forward, hackers continue to push forward at the same time. So, but I love to see companies like Breach RX, Breach Clarity talking about what to do in this kind of situation so that when you have this type of 
you know, shock moment, oh my God, we've been breached. You have a set series of events, you know how to plan for that, and you can respond intelligently, even if it's not ideal situation. So I, I very much enjoy seeing that. I think that this is the key for artificial intelligence going forward, is finding that right balance there. And I'm happy to see so many of our innovators working on it. So Greg, then what's next for Finnovate? You've had so much success with this event. What else could you possibly be working so on? So it's been a crazy summer for us. We've got a couple of new initiatives that I've been working very closely with. Finnovate has launched a podcast, which I'm hosting and I'm really excited by. A short form, interview based. Uh, we kind of take the seven minute concept from stage and do seven minute interviews with some of the people that you'll see up there on stage. Uh, we've got our first five episodes out now. You can find us on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, and of course, FinnovatePodcast.com. We also launched an awards show last night, which was really exciting, our first ever Finnovate Awards. We recognize a lot of companies who aren't able to get up on stage at Finnovate because they're not tech companies in that way, but there are a huge number of stakeholders in FinTech and it requires really hard work and a lot of dedication from banks, from service providers, from executives, and people who can take something that they see on stage at Finnovate and actually bring it into the real world and make it a reality. So we wanted to recognize that hard work. We had 19 different categories that we recognized last night. We're really excited about the uptake. We'll be doing it again in 2020. Uh, FinnovateAwards.com for anybody interested in seeing who the winners were. We've got our finalists and winners posted up there. Um, and then another big initiative, uh, we've moved our Asian show to Singapore this year, which is exciting for us. We've moved our European show to Berlin. The joke is we wanted to keep it in Europe. But really, there's a lot of reasons for that. There's a huge amount of innovation taking place across Europe, and we wanted the more central location so that we could bring in some of the Eastern Europeans, some of the Baltics and places like that where they're doing incredible things, and we're hoping that the UK folks will be able to come travel. I think they're probably going to have to get used to it. But it's a shift for us. We're excited to see how it shakes out. And I'm really, uh, I've never been to Berlin personally, so I'm looking for an excuse to go. Well, Greg, it's always a pleasure speaking with you and congratulations on your continued uh, growth and success with Finnovate. It's my pleasure and sincerely thank you. We love the work you're doing and are glad you're able to be here. Absolutely. From Medici Studio, I'm Shannon Rossick.